This is the Bull River in British Columbia. We found this spot by talking with a local fly shop and then doing some Google searching. I'll show you what we found. We did a Google search for the Bull River and we found this area that we really liked. We liked the looks of this hole right in here. It looks like it could possibly be there anyway. Uh, this bend and then maybe right in here. It's just there was enough water in here that as we looked through this area, it looked like there's kind of a flat area there we weren't sure about, but it looked like there could be another good hole here and up the river. It just gave us enough hope um, that if we hiked in there, um, that we would find some decent water to fish, and that's why we headed to this area. I made a cast targeting a nice foam line that ran the length of the pool. This spot is a long run with a fairly deep hole at the end. It's not a classic hole, but it does deepen up and slow down. We caught fish throughout this stretch. Right now, Ladin is fishing in the middle of the stretch. You can see the foam line that runs along the edge all the way along in front of him. And that foam line is where you tend to find most of the fish, uh, particularly when there's not a hatch coming off. But this is the foam line that he's working. We were seeing fish uh, rising every once in a while throughout most of that foam line. There are not a lot of boulders. This is a pretty flat section. There's small rocks to gravel and um, again not a lot of big structure in this hole. Foam lines can be great indicators of where food comes to the fish and often they will feed right in or around the foam lines. But it's still a good idea when you see a foam line like this to work your way out to it. There are fish in these areas oftentimes uh, particularly if you get a, a hatch coming off uh, so that the flies hatching are, are moving the fish to a shallower area. Um, and then sometimes in low light conditions to early morning, late evening, uh, these fish will move out of the security of the deeper water along this phone line and into shallower water. So don't just always head to the phone line, um, but you know, work your way out, particularly if you see a hatch or fish rising in the shallower water. Uh, but again, foam lines tend to give you an idea of where uh, food concentrates and where fish can often lay. Ladin is casting a little upstream and trying to get a natural drift to his fly without any drag. This can be especially important uh, when you're fishing smooth water like this area. Oh, come on, take it. Yeah. Nice. Saw that thing coming up for about a couple feet. Cool. It's decent <laughs> fish too. All right, good. Yeah. Man, I saw that thing coming up for about a couple feet. Yeah, I saw you. Yeah, I was trying to be up. as patient as I could be for a change. And it paid off. And I'm telling you, I think it's an all right fish. I mean, maybe in the 12, 14 range. Nice. That's fighting well, that's yeah. for sure. Boy, it is fighting well. Mm -hmm. Sometimes these things are deceiving in the water. You, you get a glimpse and they're, oh boy, I think it's bigger than I thought. It's a hard fighter, I'll tell you that. Yeah. Oh boy, there goes the run. Yeah, it's on that black ant or beetle. Uh. Oh shoot, doggone it. Oh boy, it's bigger than I thought. <laughs> Come on, fish. <laughs> oh nice. boy. That was a struggle to get that guy in. It's a hard <laughs> fighter. It's gorgeous cut. Really beautiful. Yeah. Woo. That's, That's a nice trout. Gorgeous wow. cut. <laughs> the reason I wanted to show you this shot is to look downstream of where Ladin was fishing. So he hooked that fish upstream of here. You can see down below, uh, there's a fair amount of current here even though it's flat. And you can see all the way around this bend and this is where it starts to deepen up and kind of becomes a hole down in here. 
And uh, this run that I was talking about just works its way all the way around uh, and is fishable all the way around that corner. This is kind of the tail out section down here. And up above, I'll show you a picture here in a little bit, but just a really long run. And uh, this shows kind of the downstream portion of it. This is a fly I caught the fish on. It's a little beetle. It has a tuft to keep it floating. Uh, orange on top, black on the bottom. And that fish really took it. Let's see, you were up above this log, weren't you? Uh, yeah. Steve moved out into the pool and made a cast. Oh, yeah. Oh, shoot. That might have been a good fish, yeah. the way it slurped like that. Yeah. Shoot. Man, I heard another big rise down there somewhere. Well, you want to try the parachute or something else? Yeah, good. You can see from this shot that the water upstream is more constrained. Um, and there's a little bit more noise on, on the surface up in here. And it's a little faster current. We did work our way up into there and we caught a few small fish up in the little faster water. You can see that I'm casting a little farther upstream than Ladin was, but the goal still is to get a natural drift. And I'm also trying to get close to that foam line as often as possible. Whether you cast farther upstream to cover a little more water or cast a little more just straight across the river, the goal is to get a natural drag-free drift most of the time. We were discussing changing flies, but Steve made another cast. Wow. I guess it's still good, huh? Yeah. Cool take. Huh. Awesome. Yeah. That's pretty good. It's not like they is steady on this thing like a big hatch, but every once in a while you get a, a fish and they've been all good fish on this thing pretty much. Steve managed to work the cutthroat closer to the net. Kind of love cutthroat trout coming up to dry flies. Yes. Good fish. Yeah, Good absolutely. Fish. Beautifully colored cutthroat. Hmm. On that beetle again. Been just working it steadily up this run. Watching fish rise, but not to my fly. And then finally it popped it. This is just another beautiful cutthroat. I don't know, 16 maybe, 15, mm -hmm. 16. There it goes. Here, Ladin moved down to the lower part of the run and um, the area really around the hole, even a little bit below where the deepest part of the hole is. So the deepest part of the hole, I kind of showed you where this was from the picture before, is right in here. And then the foam line now is pushed up along the far edge. Well, it still is. That's kind of where it was the whole time. But it pushes all the way along and gets close to these, to the gravel. The hole kind of shallows out and as you move to this side uh, downstream of him it actually starts to become a tail out thins a little bit and even goes another 20 or 30 feet to the right of that this is a more difficult place to fish uh, the wading's a little deeper you have longer casts uh, the water's pretty slow so your drift needs to be really good you need to have patience uh, have a good drag free drift uh, maybe sometimes doing some mending to uh, keep the fly where it should be. Most of the fish are again um, going to be in the foam line, but it doesn't mean that you don't try the other areas. doesn't mean you don't even try right in the middle of the hole, even though it's deeper. They can sometimes be feeding in the surface there. And you can work your way out to the foam line again through the shallow water, and again, particularly if there's a hatch going on or if it's low light conditions. Tail out areas, 
can be exceptional places to fish. Oftentimes it seems cutthroats will sit in these tailouts and uh, they can rest to a certain extent because the current's pretty slow. And, and you really have to be uh, technical in these areas because the water's shallow, it tends to be, again, real calm, no noise at the surface, and the fish can be particularly spooky. But again, really good places to fish in the tailouts. Watch for rises and um, cast directly to those fish. And what I mean by that is, let's say you saw a fish rise right there. So you wanna present a fly to it. So you're gonna cast somewhere into here, probably maybe even higher up so that the fly drifts down to that. So just if you see a rising fish though, most of the time go right after it, cast towards it because you know it's feeding, you know it's looking up. It's a great time to get them on a dry fly. Come on back. Yep, do you feel it? Uh-uh. Got him. Nice. This might be the fly. Yeah. This feels like a, a much smaller fish than the one that hit. <laughs> and it is. It is, yeah. <laughs> of course. Oh, shoot. Ah, got it. Come on, guy. Got him. All right. Woo! <laughs> Feisty! There she goes. We move to a different run that has a lot of similar characteristics. You have faster, more constrained water up here. You can see some of the noise and the riffle um, comes all the way down into this area. Um, actually even continues along the edge. It's fairly riffly along in here. So you've got a little bit more constrained area and this run though has a little more structure to it. So you can see right as it gets to here, there are rocks um, along, along this edge, you've got a rock wall. And oftentimes that provides a lot of cover for fish. There, you can see there's a foam line along there as well, and really more of a distinct hole. This is all fairly deep all the way down through here. Um, and and actually up in here too, it's fairly deep and slows down. So you've got a little bit more of a distinct hole. And then down below this, another 30, 40 feet, maybe 50 feet, um, is the tail out. I've covered quite a bit of it up, but you actually do, you see some foam lines here too, coming off of this rock wall and the foam line comes out along here. Good option is to work your way to the foam line and hit the foam line quite a bit, but there's also quite a bit of uh, river on the other side that has holding water and all up along here. We saw a few mayflies hatching at this time of day in this run, so we decided to put on an Adams, a size 12 or 14 Adams, and uh, gave that a shot, and sure enough, we were able to catch some fish. Mm. Boy, nice! Yeah, <laughs> it's a pretty good one. On the Adams, parachute Adams. Yeah. <laughs> Love cutthroats. It's gone. Okay, rest. so I get another one chance? Nope. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> no, go for it. All right. Ooh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's good fish. I saw him. Oh, shoot. Oh, no. It's good fish. Doggone it. Yep. Felt him, saw him, lost him. All right. That looks like a good one. Yeah, it feels pretty good. That's a cool take again. Boy. Yeah. I just love these things. Did you see it coming up? Or yeah. Just... Well, no, sorry. Um, 
I, it just splashed in the area where, where my fly was on that one. Yeah. I knew, you know, kind of where my fly was, saw the splash, set the hook. Yeah. Boy, it's a pretty good one. Oh, there he goes. Cool. That's a good fish. Mm-hmm. Yes. Fat body. Nice, yes. Ooh. Really nice, Cuddy. 14, maybe. Beautiful. 13, fish. 14, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, that time used the uh, Parachute Adams, size 14 Parachute Adams, which is kind of supposed to be the fly to go to up here on the Bull River. See some water over there that might be okay. As you can see, we moved to a different run, and uh, this one is different than the other two in the sense that there is um, not a hole in it per, per se. It basically is a riffle that comes down and um, deepens up, and probably this whole area uh, through here um, starts to be at a fairly consistent uh, pace as far as the river speed and depth, and I'd say the maximum depth is maybe three feet, something like that. But the nice thing um, I think that really attracts fish in here, as you can see, there's lots of boulders. Um, there, uh, you know, so places to hide, uh, three or four feet is plenty of depth uh, for cutthroats uh, to hide. Um, and with the added boulders, I think it makes it a really nice run. Oh, That's, boy. Oh, dang it. That was a good fish. That was a big fish, Steve. Duck, got it. Oh, that's a big fish. That's huge. That's a big fish. That's a huge big. fish. That's a big fish. Wow. Man alive. Yeah. Boy, that's big. That is big. Yeah. Holy smokes. That is a really nice cutthroat. And I didn't pull too hard on him. Yeah. Fish. Oh my gosh. I like it when they nose up like that. From this angle, you can see uh, the top part of this run and uh, really does. Um, it's a nice riffle. You can see a noise all the way across here, even more in here and more in here and a good, uh, again, good boulders, good structure. The thing that I like to see about this is uh, riffles, a great thing about riffles is um, they tend to provide more oxygen for the fish. Uh, cutthroats don't always like to sit right in though, sometimes they will, uh, but oftentimes they like to feed down below those where the water's a little bit calmer, uh, but hopefully deepens up. That's kind of what you're looking for. And um, you can see some more fast riffle, a lot of noise over here. And I, and I wouldn't be afraid to put flies up into those, but I would tend to expect fish more in these areas down off of the riffle. And, and again, even the shallow stuff, um, because there's such good structure right here, I do believe that I, I uh, hooked a fish right in this area as well, a little shallower, but there's nice rock structure and um, enough current to, to bring fish in. So just a really good run here. We caught some nice fish out of it. Oh my slab. Oh yes. 
Oh boy. Man, you could see it as soon as he Head came out of the water. Huge. Just fat bodied, you know. Goodness. Unbelievable. What a fish. Look at that. Gosh. I don't know. 17, 18. Three pounds, maybe. Wow. Man. The setup we used on this trip. Because it was all just dry fly fishing, we, we were able to use nine foot five weight fly rods with floating line, matching line, five weight line. We used a nine to 12 foot leaders, 4X and 5X tippet. And typically the bigger the fly, like the hoppers, we would use the 4X and the smaller the atoms, we would use 5X tippet. And the fish we didn't expect to be so big that they'd be breaking off 5X tippet. So. The flies we used throughout the day was the parachute atoms and a traditional atom size 12 and 14. We had best luck with the 14. We used a black Taylor's Fat Albert in size 14. We had really good luck with that. We caught a few fish on a Moorish Hopper size 8 and a couple fish on an orange stimulator size 8.